I like boxing. Boxing's been good to me. I sort of owe it a debt of gratitude. I think that the young fellas should uh, take a chance and learn uh, the out of boxing. Uh, it's too bad that there aren't some better programming for youngsters, such as uh, Little, League, uh, Little League football and baseball with uh, a great um, organization. I think that boxing should have something like that that leads into golden gloves, and then if the boys like it, of course, professional boxing. When I was 14 years old and I heard the announcement of the fight on the radio. The world champion Rocky Marciano enters the ring. I knew who would remain the champion today. He had a huge influence on me at the beginning of my career. If he was shadowboxing, he was imagining the opponent. If he was running, he was imagining the opponent was running alongside. Marciano simply destroyed all his opponents on the way, he beat them. Visualization is a terrible force. Rocky Marciano was really real. There was a feeling that he was not a man, but a machine. There was no other figure in the history of professional boxing with such a controversial reputation as Rocky Marciano. Serious boxing connoisseur Ted Carroll generally puts Rocky in 10th place in his heavyweight champion table, however, with a lot of reservations, recognizing, in particular, the completely incomprehensible willpower of this boxer. Newspaper reporters also often bite Marciano, noting his lack of elegance. We must keep in mind the main criterion when assessing the strength of any boxer, his majesty the result, and Marciano has an outstanding one. I would throw a hard punch, then he would throw a hard punch. The difference was that Rocky would throw 10 more. He just never stopped throwing punches. Therefore, at the time of his performances, and still there were many specialists who believed that he was, of course, number one among the world champions of all time. This, perhaps, can be argued, but let's turn to the facts. In general, Rocky Marciano spent 49 fights in the professional ring without a single defeat. At the same time, only six fighters managed to hold out until the end of the match, the rest were knocked out. Welcome back to the History of Boxing Channel. Today, I invite you to remember and talk about the man whose story was taken as the basis for the image of Rocky Balboa, and not only, but also about one of the most striking and significant boxers in history, the legendary Rocky Marciano. Hello, my name is Rocky Marciano. Rocky Marciano is one of the brightest and most important boxers in history. He is the only heavyweight in the history of boxing who has won the world championship belt and has not suffered a single defeat throughout his career. Aggressive fighting style and an impressive track record inspired the famous American actor and director Sylvester Stallone to create the image of Rocky Balboa, which in turn gave the world, in my opinion, a great sports drama. Marciano fought between 1947 and 1955, during which time he took part in 49 professional fights, winning all of them, 43 by knockout. Stallone, who was a boxing fan, was so impressed with Marciano's performances that he captured a number of the legendary heavyweight's traits, including his name, in his Rocky Balboa. And although the plot of the series of paintings is based on the fights of other boxers, in particular, Chuck Webner and Joe Frazier, it was Marciano who became the main prototype of one of the most famous characters in cinema. Chapter 1. Name Change and $50 First Fight Rocky Marciano, real name Rocco Francis Marchigiano, was born in Brockton, Massachusetts, USA on September 1st, 
1923. His parents were from Italy. Father, Pirino Marchigiano, was a naval officer and World War I veteran who died of pneumonia when Rocco was 18 months old. The mother of the future champion, Pasqualina Picciuto, worked in a shoe factory. The Marchigiano family had five children. Rocco had two brothers, Sonny and Peter, and three sisters, Alice, Conchetta, and Elizabeth. In 1943, after graduating from school, Rocco was drafted into the Army. It was in the ranks of the U.S. Armed Forces that Rocco began to take his first steps in boxing. He participated in the boxing tournament of his squad. Later, he was transferred to Wales, where he helped service ships cross the English Channel to Normandy. He did not take direct part in the hostilities of the Second World War. Before being transferred to the reserve, Rocco won a boxing tournament among the military in 1946, after which he decided to start a boxing career among amateurs. The lack of proper training and a rather impressive age did not allow him to dominate at the amateur level. He had 12 fights, losing four of them. In March 1947, in his native Massachusetts, Rocco made his debut in the professional ring, defeating compatriot Lee Epperson by knockout in the third round. Rocco received $50 for this fight and planned to return to regular work. Epperson, after this defeat, never entered the professional ring again. When I first looked at Rocky, he seemed to me an inept fighter. He did not block attacks, did not put the weight of his body into blows. He did everything wrong, but he had power. I told Weil, Rocky's manager, that I would try to work with him. Before the fight, Rocco was under the tutelage of eccentric trainer Charlie Goldman, known for his outrageous behavior in public and limitless talent in the field of boxing training. From the very beginning of his coaching career, the Polish specialist collaborated with promoter Armand Al Weil, and after defeating Epperson, Goldman recommended that Al Weil pay attention to the young boxer. The manager began to work on the image of the future boxing star and first of all advised him to change his name to a more short and memorable one. So, Rocco Marchigiano became Rocky Marciano, and later Stallone, impressed by the career of The Rock from Brockton, also gave his movie character the pseudonym Rocky. The real name of Rocky Balboa in the film is Robert. Chapter 2 David in the World of Goliaths Marciano was a very strong puncher, very aggressive. He had 100% aggression that the trainer set him up for. The first steps in professional boxing were difficult for the future champion. It is at this stage that Marciano's resemblance to the cinematic Rocky Balboa manifests itself to the greatest extent. In the film Rocky the Hero is trained by Mickey Goldmill, a rude white man aged. It is not clear how he saw the talent in Balboa, who had neither school nor any other boxing inclinations, except for a crushing blow. Goldmill is a direct copy of Charlie Goldman, they are similar both mentally and externally. Goldmill, like his prototype, in his youth was a good boxer, who, however, did not gain world popularity. During his time as a boxer, Goldmill gained a wealth of experience fighting in the ring against various opponents, which later helped him become an excellent coach with a whole arsenal of his own training methods for athletes. By the way, in the universe of the film Rocky the Heroes are aware of the existence of Rocky Marciano, the hero Stallone has a poster depicting the legendary American boxer, and Goldmill from time to time tells Rocky that he reminds him of Marciano. Ah, Rocky Marciano. You know, you kind of remind me of The Rock, you know that? You really think so? That's right, you move like him, you, and you got heart like he did. Yeah, I got heart, but I ain't got no locker, do I, Mick? If you got a tall fighter, make him taller. If you got a short fighter, make him shorter. In reality, Goldman and Marciano had to seriously work on the boxer's body and technique in order to level out a number of his shortcomings. But the biggest problem, because of which professional coaches did not want to work with Marciano, lay in an absolutely inaccessible area. Rocky was anthropometrically unsuitable for the heavyweight division. 
He was quite short, only 179 centimeters, while the best heavyweights of the 1950s had an average height of 183 centimeters and above, weighed little, no more than 83 kilograms throughout his career, and had extremely short arms, arm span 173 centimeters. Chapter 3 Deafening Start for Professionals Many say that Rocky did not look good in that fight. You know, for me, that guy lying on the floor of the ring also looked bad. The wisest Goldman, however, did not drastically break Marciano's style. He foresaw that, despite the awkward figure, the American had great potential. The trainer slightly adjusted the boxer's preparatory process, paying primarily attention to the stance in order to improve Marciano's footwork. Goldman tied his ankles with a rope, leaving a small gap. In this position, Marciano sparred and worked out the strength and speed of the strike. At the same time, he never praised his ward so that he would not relax. By the way, Goldmill resorted to the same method in the film, forcing Balboa to train with his legs tied. According to contemporaries, Goldman had a peculiar sense of humor and a very sharp character. Like coach Rocky Balboa Goldmill in the film, he constantly criticized Marciano and urged him to work to the limit. Another pain point of the future champion was the left side kick. Considering his short hands, already in the early stages of his career, Marciano was forced to abandon the classic jab in favor of working at close range, where hooks and uppercuts become indispensable weapons. Goldman forced Marciano to box, creating combinations of punches that would be impossible to defend against. However, critics still saw in the boxer only slowness and inability to defend himself. Marciano missed too many blows, but his coach knew what he was dealing with. He ideally prepared his protege for a professional career like Balboa in the film. Marciano fell in love with the audience with his aggressive attacking style and steel chin. Further, the paths of the real Rocky and the movie Hero Stallone diverge. If Rocky Balboa in the film universe lost his first serious professional fight against Apollo Creed, then Marciano began to churn out victory after victory, and just two years after his debut, the counter of his victories reached 25, 23 of them by knockout. Marciano's popularity grew at an incredible rate, Full halls in Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and even New York gathered for fights with his participation. A formidable puncher in the ring, outside of boxing, he amazed fans with his modesty. Chapter 4. Fight with Joe Lewis. Joe Lewis is the greatest heavyweight champion of all time. Rocky Marciano is second only to Lewis. The only thing that Marciano lacked at the turn of the 1940s and 1950s was a truly stellar rival. He defeated the then-promising Paul Harry Haft, the fighting American Ted Lowry, and the American Ronald Lostars, who caused Marciano a lot of problems. But on such fighters, it is hardly possible to build the legacy that Rocky aspired to. New York, USA, 1951. Rocky Marciano vs. Joe Lewis. Everything changed in 1951. A couple of years earlier, due to serious financial problems, the truly legendary heavyweight Joe Lewis, who in his best years was recognized as the greatest fighter in his weight category, resumed his performances. Lewis returned to the ring, losing to Ezra Charles, but then won eight victories over little-known opponents and received the right to challenge Marciano. Manager Rocky Al Wilde immediately took up organizational issues and the International Boxing Club, which oversaw the holding of the largest boxing matches until the 1960s, promised Louis $300,000 for the fight, which forced him to agree. From the first rounds of the fight, which took place in New York at Madison Square Garden, it was clear that Lewis could not take advantage of the height and mass. He lost his former hand speed, and his once cannon strikes could not penetrate Marciano's stone chin. Rocky, in his usual manner, acted as the first number, clamping the opponent at the ropes and throwing a large number of blows to the head. The eighth round of the fight became the key. 
Having regained his breath, Luis began to hit more accurately than his opponent, while Marciano, on the contrary, seriously slowed down and stopped reaching the head of the former champion. In the middle of the round, Luis decided to improve his position and began to back away, to which Marciano responded with a jerk and a short left hook. The blow landed squarely on the brown bomber's jaw, and he fell to the floor of the ring with a crash. Lewis managed to get up near the end of the referee's countdown. The former champion could hardly focus his eyes on one point, and in modern boxing, the judge would certainly stop the fight, seeing the deplorable state of the fighter. But then the rules were different. Luis signaled that he could continue the fight, and Marciano immediately pounced on him, bringing down a hail of blows on his opponent. Rocky waved his arms like a windmill, and after two uppercuts from his left hand and a finishing right direct blow, by this moment Lewis had already sat down on the ropes unconscious, the legendary boxer fell out of the ring. He was a great puncher, one of the best of all time. He just threw one punch after another, and all of them were hard. Chapter 5. Championship Title After beating Joe Lewis, Marciano went on to win knockout after knockout. However, he still did not have the opportunity to compete for the heavyweight championship belt, which since 1951 belonged to the American Jersey Joe Walcott, known for his quick hands and extremely broad shoulders. He took the title from Ezra Charles, and until the summer of 1952 no one could interfere in the duel of these two boxers. In January 1952, a rematch took place, and the third fight in a row between Charles and Walcott, in which Walcott managed to defend the belt, after which Marciano announced his claims to the title. Pennsylvania, USA, 1952, Rocky Marciano vs. Jersey Joe Walcott. The fight between Marciano and Walcott took place on September 23, 1952 in Pennsylvania. As in the case of Joe Lewis, Marciano's opponent was much older than the challenger, Jersey Joe's 38 years old versus Marciano's 29, but Walcott revealed late and approached the duel with Marciano at the peak of his form. The first round began without reconnaissance, both fighters went at each other with the clear goal of inflicting as much damage on the opponent as possible. By the middle of the round, Walcott had a good combination of punches, because of which Marciano almost lost his balance and was forced to go into the clinch. The referee separated the fighters, after which the unprecedented happened Walcott sent Marciano to the first knockdown in his career with a single left hook. Starting from the 10th round, the champion switched to work as number two and acted at a long distance, forcing Marciano to hit the air. By the 13th round, in total, the fight was designed for 15 rounds, Marciano, hitherto undefeated, was losing to Walcott on the cards of all arbitrators. He was angry, ran after the champion and completely forgot about combination boxing. There were no more chances to win on points and the only opportunity to pick up the coveted belt lay in an accidental blow. But Rocky Marciano wouldn't be himself if it didn't work out in the end. In the 13th round, Walcott stopped trying to attack Marciano and clearly resigned himself to the idea that he would lose the last rounds. This would not have affected the final result of the battle in any way, because before that the champion took almost every round into his asset. But he made a mistake in one of the episodes, Marciano pressed Walcott to the corner of the ring and waited for the moment for the right cross, which fell exactly on the opponent's bare chin. Walcott hung helplessly on the ropes on one arm, and Marciano decided to add a left hook. There was no need for this, the champion fell face down on the canvas and could not get to his feet on his own. I never wanted to lose to anyone, but if I had to lose, then I'm glad I lost to you. You are a good fighter and you will be a great champion. Chapter 6. Triumphant End of Career Since winning the belt, Marciano has made five successful defenses. Marciano won Walcott twice, this time in the first round, lost Starza and Ezid Charles and once against Britain Don Cockle. 
The champion bathed in glory, earning quite good fees for those times, about $200,000 for each fight. It was assumed that Marciano, in the absence of proper competition, will continue to perform on a quiet wave. But then the nominal light heavyweight Archie Moore decided to go hunting for the heavyweight championship belt. Throughout his career, he faced a wide variety of boxers tall, short, hitting and not having a knockout punch, fast and slow. In the future, this experience will allow him to become one of the best boxing theorists and then the coach of the legendary Muhammad Ali and no less high-class fighter George Foreman. He could hurt you, sure, but it was the quantity of his punches. He just had more stamina than anyone else in those days. He was like a bull with gloves. New York, USA, 1955. Rocky Marciano vs. Archie Moore. Marciano and Moore met on September 21, 1955 in New York at a packed Yankee Stadium. For the undefeated champion, the first three rounds of that fight were the most difficult of all time. In the second round, Moore set Marciano to the second knockdown of his career. Until the very end of the round, Marciano could not fully recover, although the knockdown was the result of the champion's poor footwork, Moore managed to knock his breath out. After that, the old mongoose tried to build on his success and in the third round, he even managed to cut Marciano under his left eye, but closer to the middle of the fight, Rocky, due to his excellent physical readiness and a deadly blow, took over the lead, and in the sixth round, he completely arranged a uniform beating of the applicant, twice sending knocked him down. In the seventh and eighth rounds, Moore was knocked down once more, and in the ninth fight was completed. Marciano landed countless punches on Moore, breaking his block naturally. After another series of hooks, Moore, having not received an accented hit, this happened more likely due to the totality of the injuries received, fell down in the corner of the ring, tried to rise and awkwardly slid down the ropes. Immediately after the fight, the reigning champion unexpectedly announced that his family was pushing him to end his career. My family asks me to finish, said Marciano in the ring. My mother, father, wife, for them, each of my fights is a test. I really don't know what to do. Seven months after the fight with Moore, Marciano, at an urgently assembled press conference, announced the end of performances at the age of 32. In his later years, he ran a business, spent time with his family, and despite a number of offers, he never returned to boxing. However, the life of the Brockton blockbuster was interrupted quite early. On the eve of his 46th birthday, on August 31, 1969, he died in a plane crash. His personal plane crashed near the city of Des Moines, Iowa. According to rumors, the disaster was set up by the Mafia, with whom Marciano, like many other boxers, had some partnerships. Why dance with an opponent for 10 rounds when you can knock him out in the first? In the ring, I never really knew fear. If you like this video, then you will like these. Go ahead and enjoy watching. And don't forget to like, comment and share with a friend. See you later.